Good evening, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Once again, you thought I wouldn't say my signature hello, 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 right? I did. Um, very nice to be back uh, after our two weeks uh, since last time with our time to talk. I am Rafael Caldas. This is Guilherme over this side. This is Guilherme. And um, we are your hosts, hosts for the night. What is Time to Talk? Time to Talk is our fortnightly conversations about mediumship. Today, we are in our episode 22, where we're going to talk about mediumistic works in spiritism. And I'll tell you a little bit about why, what I mean by that in a second. But before, a quick run through. Thank you to our broadcasters, the Spiritist Society of London, SSL, BUS, the British Union of Spiritist Societies, and Kardec Radio. All three our institutions are committed to spreading um, the information and the knowledge about Spiritism um, around the world. So go check their Facebook pages, like their pages, go on, on YouTube, follow them so you can see more and more content and material about spiritism. But time to talk. Time to talk is um, a program that the idea is for us to open a channel, open a conversation where you can come and bring your questions, comments, and participate with us. The idea is to have a conversation, have a chat. So anything that comes to your mind related to this topic, or maybe sometimes not. Just drop your comments. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you have something to add or you'd like to clarify. Um, just drop us a hello. Say where you're watching us from. And we will bring it um, on the screen so we can incorporate in our conversation. Right. Today, our episode is Medium Mystic Works in Spiritism. And where is this subject coming from? So the idea about this subject came from our last conversation. Our last conversation was about the turning tables. I don't have turning tables anymore. And I think we end up talking about how physical effects, mediums, still exist. But nowadays, they are a bit more addressed, let's say, to other types of work, especially um, works related to cure and healing. And it just came idea, but wait a minute, we're talking about cure and healing and so on, but do people actually know what kind of uh, mediumistic works exist out there from a spiritist perspective? What is the common uh, activities um, that a medium can be involved with in a spiritist center? I do not intend to cover every single type of mediumistic work. And if when you go through the examples we have, you know about another one, and maybe the center you go to, or there's somebody that you know that have another type of work, please share with us as well. Describe them there, and then we can bring them on the screen to talk about it. Anything to add, Guilherme? First of all, good evening, everyone. And when Rafael was saying about mediumistic works, quite often we think that it only happens inside that mediumship meeting where we have most of the time closed doors with a limited number of participants. But we may see that in so many other different activities and we don't pay attention on it. But nevertheless, it is also a good example. So I'm pretty sure we will bring through through the night a few examples that perhaps we never thought about it, but is also part of it. Yeah, you're talking about myself because when we were discussing like the examples, you dropped some examples and I was like, oh, I never thought about them as mediumistic work, but I guess they are. But I have questions about them. We're going to get there. Um, 
I want you to start, if you agree, talking about probably the most common thing that you will get in contact. If you look for a spiritist group or a spiritist center, you will, from the beginning, get in contact with something called healing. And some people call it passes as well. I don't know if there are any other words. I know that here in the UK, it's uh, it usually translated to as healing. And we even mentioned a few episodes ago that Guilherme brought the, the, the term um, heiki, um, which is similar, similar kind of a principle behind. Um, but anyways, I think that's probably the most common medium mystic activity that um, we have in spiritist groups. And what is that? How, how does that work? What does it mean? What do you mean everybody giving healing is a medium word? So um, I'll explain in simple terms how I see it. Guilherme, you can then correct me or compliment or whatever. Um, healing is a moment where a medium that is capable of donating energy in in abundance or, or a bit more um it actually doesn't even have it doesn't even need to give energy in abundance but it understands how to donate the energy for that specific purpose um uses a specific moment uh, to together with their knowledge about how to give away the energy allow the spirits that are working in the center with the group to use the energy and bring balance whatever the person might be needed the person who is receiving healing receive the energy as a cleansing um it's like a cleansing shower of energy let's say um that helps cleaning our energy rebalancing the different chakras, rebalancing the different energy centers that we have, um, clear away any heavy matter or coming from thoughts or energy that we might be carrying with us, generating within us. Um, and that is nothing but that. It's, it's like a shower of energy that helps put your uh, body and your soul back in balance. Did I say anything weird, Glenn? No, not, not at all. Not at all. And uh, there's only one thing that that uh, you you said that's one of the things that's most common. I think it's one of the things that most of the people are looking for, right? Because they most of the people come to the spirit center looking for that, right? But not every center has enough people to do it. Sometimes they are they are even no no nobody to do it. And and it is amazing because you don't need to be special to do it. If you are alive, you have what is required to do. And then this is not the objective here tonight, but you have what is the most important. You have your animal energy. That's what you will be given that's all so if you are alive you have it of course there are a few things that are required to you to do if you want to do it well but uh, the main principle everyone has of course if you follow a few things few instructions if you improve your conditions if i may say like that you work better but that's another thing I feel a bit uncomfortable with that name, healing, really, because healing yeah. people relate to cure, and we do not cure anyone. Yeah. We are facilitators, but we don't cure people, right? And I just checked here on, on the app. If we use passes from Portuguese into English, there's also pass, but it seems that we don't use that here. Yeah. But uh, I... I felt strange when I heard healing for the first time. Yeah, no, I'm used yeah. to it, but I felt a bit strange. Yeah, I was the same. I think when I when I first heard it, it was also be like, mm, 
maybe not the best translation, but it doesn't matter, right? It's just, it, it is what it is. Um, okay. I think that leads us to the other one, the, the one that we were talking about last week, which is Cure. Oh, no, before we move on, um, I was planning to bring a video, but I couldn't get it. Is I want to explain a bit what, how, he, for, for, for the few places I've been, the different ways that healing happened. And in some places, it might be just like you are in a room and you study or you heard a specific lecture. And then there'll be a dedicated time where people will be praying. And then the medium will come out in front of you or behind you. And they will just impose their hands like that. That is one way. For a while, they will do that. They will be in prayer as well themselves, connecting to the good spirits and sending energy to you. In other places, um, instead of just in the imposition of hands, there might be some movement around you, different movements to clear your clean, uh, your energy, to send energy to a specific place, and then to harmonize the energy around you. Um, in some other places, you might go to a special room. So there is a dedicated room that the different groups throughout the night will go to a room and then all of the healing happens in one single room. So there are many different, uh, I guess, formats. But in the end, they're all the same. They all have the same uh, function and uh, that we just described. The mechanism is the same. The mechanism, the mechanism is exactly the same, right? The way you may decide to do is because of the way you learned, because of the way you saw people doing it. When you extend your hands like Jesus used to do, a lot of people really defend that is the only way to do it because Jesus did like that. Well, I, I'm not Jesus. And I have, I, I, I'm very far away from that, really. And uh, he did not even need to extend his hand. His eyes, his voice, his thought was more than enough to do it. But he decided to do it with hands. But he is in a different, different level. level. He's in a different level. And if you start to evaluate all the possibilities, like magnetism, like the Chinese medicine, where they have the meridians and few things. Other, you start to understand why some mediums also move their hands. And when we talk about mediums moving their hands, we're not talking about any mediums. I have very good mediums, very well known mediums, that they used to move their hands when they do a healing. The most important is the intention that's coming from your heart and from here. And then you manipulate your energy in conjunction with the energy of your benefactor or the, the worker dedicated for the activity. That's the most important. Yeah. That leads me to the next activity, mediumistic activity, which is very similar but that one is what we call cure. And usually we say cure passes, or I don't know how we would translate that in English. If anybody knows, drop me, drop me in the comments. It's like healing for a specific pure purpose. And that one is a similar mechanism in terms of intention, donation of fluid, magnetism but that one is usually um prescribed to people who might have might be going through specific issues specific problems diseases illnesses anyway specific problems in their physical or spiritual um bodies and the medium at least that's how i understand the medium that can help with that specific type of uh, of um, cure healing or cure pass um, is a medium that has a different type of mediumship that donate 
that don't, at least that's how I learned, that donates mm -hmm. enough energy and more energy. I think that's more when you connect them to the physical effects. I'm not saying that all cure mediums are physical effects meeting, but it's in the same kind of realm that the energy they can donate can be used by doing a bit more intense re-energizing and, he and healing process focused on a specific area of your body or of your perispirit. That you, one, you are I, totally before right. I give the mic to you, Guilherme, <laughs> that one, from what I know, is, is a treatment. There is a number of times, there is other things that you need to do related to your studies, your other uh, healings and so on. And yeah, that's that's how I that's how I learned. Go <laughs> get I don't think we have a correct word to describe how we used to call that in Brazil in English. So I would call in the same way, just for the sake of understanding. I would not consider the same group of people that are way able to do the first example we gave we call healing as someone that also can work on the second one normally the, the mediums that work on the second one they are indicated specifically from the benefactors to be involved in this type of work because most as you rightly said most of them have a peculiar characteristics to to work in that kind of work quite often the person that is coming to receive that energy he or she is on a stretcher you may have few stretcher in the dedicated area where you have mediums dedicated mediums working in the activity with their own benefactors or spiritual workers the intensity of this work is totally different than the first one. A lot of people talk about it, but you need to ask, are you familiar with that type of work? Because the energy is different. I did that for 10 years at least. In this practice, you see things that you do not see in the first one. You see a deeper treatment, if you can say like that, or a deeper healing or whatever. I, I, we don't have a right word for in English. But we see things that are, are totally different than what we see on the first one, right? The level of care, I, I would say the duty of care of the mediums that participate on the second one is very specific. It's very specific regarding what you eat, what you drink, what you do some choices you need to do on your day-to-day -day thing because we are dealing with different type of organization even on the spiritual world to be able to have it done properly so that's just to, to give you some different thing different ideas of how they can be differentiated and there are even people in the spiritism that believe that's not spiritism but the mechanism behind is exactly the same working with the spirits if it's not on the spiritism i don't know what it is and is also we can also find the information in kardec in andre louise and other authors as well explaining how it works how it can be done and things like that i just want to say hello to elza and to nancy who are here with us. And Nancy is actually saying that in Italy, they adopt the same name as Passi or Pass. Um, and Elsa is explaining that um, when we were talking about uh, the different types of uh, healing movements or hand position, she said that there's a lay on hands. And then she means that applying healing in our spiritist center. And there's no touching in, in a person. It's just like Heiki. Uh, so just laying on hands, so no, usually there's no touching. Um, next, so we talked about healing, we talked about cure. 
what are the other common mediumistic activities that we have? Water. Water. Fluidified water. Energized water. Is that how what does it, Yeah, how does it work? How does it work? So, when you need energy and you are about to do an exercise or something, you might go and um, have an energy drink or a soft drink full of sugar or something that give you, gives you that boost of energy. A fluidified water is very similar for different, for other reasons. <laughs> um, so in the center I used to go to, the fluidified water is when we were doing a moment of giving healing to everyone, the mediums would go to a specific area where there'll be a lot of water laid in different um, plastic cups or glasses. And they would, again, with the imposition of hands, energize, trans transfer the energy to the water. Liam mentioned many times about the studies on how water um, adheres and changes its physiology based on the energy that is, or the light or whatever it is exposed to. Anyways, so the mediums do, do that. Um, and then we will energize the water. The water will hold uh, that the principles that the, the, the medium is passing on to, to them. And then in the end, after the studies and so on, you go there and you have a drink of that water. And that helps you in your healing, or you energizing yourself again and a rebalancing of yourself, but from within your body. Look at that. The water is the medium that accepts everything. Light, smell, energy. Water is the, the element that is closer to the fluid cosmic universal that we will ever have. This is accepting everything. We can find water everywhere. And as you said, you have mediums that sometimes they gather, gather around the water to fluidify the water, but not every institution, not every center does like that. My understanding is if the mediums are gathering together around the water to fluidify, they are donating the animal energy that we all have, plus mm -hmm. the energy from the spiritual world, from the benefactors. Some places, they just ask people to leave the water in the specific table or area, and the spirits will manipulate the energy for the participants if they need to, or they will bring energy from the nature or from themselves, but when we are gathering around it and we are directing our thoughts and our energy, then we are definitely sending our energy. So we have a little bit of variety of the way people do. But the objective is exactly the same. You made me think about, I was actually looking at my glass here. You made me think about not only in the center, but many people... I do it myself. Do it when they are doing a gospel at home as well. They put the separated water. They know that in that moment then in their house they are dedicating some time to study and reflect. Benefactors might come, might come now, will come, and uh, they can help energize their water as well during that moment. We have to remember that when we are talking about mediums transfer their animal energy to other people or to the water, it's very important to remember that we can only give what we have. If I'm sick, very sick, what am I given? If I smoke a lot, what am I given? If I drink a lot, what am I given to a child, for example? So that is a transfer of energy. It's like a bloody transfer. We know that if you do have some diseases, we cannot give blood. And the energy is the same. If my energy is positive, 
Nobody's perfect, by the way. But if my energy is positive enough to help, is one thing. If I'm totally disbalanced, if I'm totally incorrect in the sense of bad actions, drinking, eating, everything wrong, what are you doing? So we need to have that in mind. It's not just because I, I want to. Yeah, I want to is the first thing. But then you need to prepare yourself to be able to do it. Yeah. Next. What are the other activities? I can think of one that... I think also is relatively common, especially for centers or uh, groups that have um, mediums, like extensive mediums, they are part of the group and, and there's a serious work behind the group and so on and discipline in terms of when the studies happen and so on, which is to receive um, messages either, okay, how can I explain it in a simple way? It can either be a medium that hears and reproduces a message to a group. So let's say during the study, we have a study, we have a lecture, and somebody comes and has to expose their ideas and the development of their ideas on a specific subject. And then in the end, one of the, the mediums that participated in that, um, in that lecture receive a message to share with a bigger group. Again, it might be either it hears the message and reproduces. It might be it it lends its vocal cords to a spirit and the spirit speaks through them. It might receive a message during the meeting or at the end of the meeting um, through writing. But those are messages related to the group, usually related to the subject, in, needed for that moment. It makes sense to have the moment for the group that is there in study. Um, that is one that's relatively common. Do you, you have the same experience, Graham, in your in your groups and centers? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that you now in, in few institutions. So yeah, that's pretty common as well. And the mechanism is we we already spoken about that before, right? And yeah, I think everything you said is spot on. Well, I have a question from um, Nancy. It's quite good. Oh, before that, before uh, that, there's a comment. There's, <laughs> Is that the one about the, from the US? Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't know the name, but N G H. Nice to yes. see you here. So yeah, lay on. Lay on hands. Lay on hands. Yeah, I Instead like. Instead of healing, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I also mentioned that is a uh, can heal like heal like that in the UK as well, but usually you're healing. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Related to like medium, mediumistic work, Nancy is saying that um, it's not recommended to eat meat before lay on hands. Is that right? I remember my mom saying that. I actually remember that as well. I actually remember that as well. But not for lay on hands, for other mediumistic works. Yeah. What uh, I would say, right? If you are a carnivore and not eating car meat that day will bring you a very strong discomfort, it's better that you eat a little bit of meat than not eating meat and coming totally out of balance to do your healing or lay things or hand, whatever, right? Would be better if in that particular day, we avoid at least red red meat would be better. <clears throat> but that for the, the normal healing is not we, we don't regard that in too much into like we don't restrict that to people that work with healing. If you're going to work in that second possibility we spoke here already today, that the people on the stretchers where you have a more intense work. And then in that particular day, it is strongly recommend not to eat meat, not white, not red meat. A fish, 
yeah, that's fine. But the other type of meat, no. No alcohol, no sex, no cigars, smoke. That, as I said initially, we have way more restrictions because of the nature of the work that will be performed. And those restrictions are also informed by the benefactors. They are responsible for this work. It's not just because we want to. No. We, we ask, they explain why, we understand why, and then, yes. We, in that particular scenario, we, we, we would say no. On the first one, give and take. But we recommend people to eat light. But you have to bear in mind, Nancy, that uh, everything in excess is negative to you. Even if you take a lot of sugar in a day, it's negative to you. Mm. So everything in excess you should avoid. Well, should avoid anyway, right? Especially on those days. Yeah, I think a, a good. Uh point is there's a physiological point behind this right so the energy they generate you generate through your metabolism so if your body is struggling to deal with high levels of sugar or with digestion of something that is quite heavy and it sits on your system so those are things that will influence how your metabolism work and how you generate that animalized energy that will be used in that specific um, work. We That's the reason why. We have to remember that everything we ingest create energy. And that type of work, that type of mediumship work, what we donate is energy. So if I eat a lot of red meat, we are transferring that energy through our work. If I'm taking a drugs, medicine, for example, I also transferring that to that work. So that's why we also say to people, are you okay? Are you feeling okay? Do you have any problem? We we instinctive people to tell us if they start to use any drugs. Well, I mean drugs and medicine, right? And because some of them will not interfere. Some of some have drugs will interfere, right? Some prescribed drugs are not recommended at all to have the person working with that type of mediumship for that particular type of work. It's case by case, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Elsa shared with us that the name of our friend from the U.S. is Norma. Hi, Norma. Th thanks for your comments and nice to have you here with us. But next... Other activities that we have, mediumistic activities that we have in a spiritist center. The next one that, that I think about still related to receiving messages, like the one we we're talking about in, in lectures and, and and big study groups, is I guess what we call, let me see how I would translate that. Um, a spiritual consultation, maybe. Um, where people might be facing specific issues or problems in their lives and they might want guidance or help or whatever it is from a spiritual perspective. And in some places you are able to either write or send a message or request something and then you will receive um, a response from the, from the spirits. Usually it's from it's a it's written, but it could be also somebody that hears the spirits and then writes down the answers and then you receive your answer. Mm -hmm. Of course, in for those cases, as like we say many times, you wouldn't ask things from a, just a purely material or egocentric, self-centered. Um, perspective right because if you do of course you'll be able you can still send it the questions that you want but you, you might not get the answer that um you expect i in particular don't like to incentive that type of work because it create like a bond and people sometimes they start to 
ask the right questions in the beginning, and then afterwards they start to ask about anything, and then if they don't have an answer, they don't even know what to do sometimes. So I, I, I prefer not to incentive that type of work, but I know they exist. Yeah. And I also know that in some cases they are very positive, but uh, there are some type of work that are, I'm not very fond of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the the risk you run is you have, in theory, everything at your disposal to make your decisions and your free will to do it. So, But, as Guilherme said, it's a case by case, you cannot generalize. Um, another one that just came to my mind, and it might not be, I guess, normally, as far as I know, it might not be normally, I guess, called medium mystic, is the fraternal assistance, if, if yes, direct it, translation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it depends of the institution. Some institution, you just get a person that is can hear well, is prepared to listen to people, right? But some institutions also try to accommodate mediums to do their job. So when you're talking to the person, it's more kind. Try to go on that avenue. Ask those questions. Think about that with, and so it does help. Yeah. Because we don't know anything, right? But sometimes they say, ask about the mom. How is the mom? And that's enough to open up a, a different possibility to the conversation. And it does help. So it depends from institution yeah. to institution. I think it's fair to say, look, it's there's always a um, an element of inspiration, right, when dealing with those conversations. So in that sense... There is mediumistic work. But in so, for, let's say, uh, for example, on that second example of healing we gave with the stretches or thing like that, we have a kind of conversation before the person starts to do that type of thing. And in that particular situation, it is a fraternal assistance, but in that specific situation, having a medium able to listen to the instructions while we talk to the person is very handy it's very handy what else i will tell you something that's my preferred job okay the soup that is one that i want to ask you what you meant by that so soup first of all i like to eat so it's my preferred work and the speed is stand up Second of all is we have to remember that some of the people that come in to eat in the institution, even when you go to distribute that on the streets, is the only food they have sometimes, not only that day, even before. In our institution, back in Brazil, for example, we have very young kids very, very young kids. That's the only food they had that particular day. They come from a very poor community and they only go to the place, to our institution. They don't care about anything else. They need to eat. So when we are preparing the food, the soup, we also have mediums over there. What we do with water, we also do with the soup. So it's a, a simple way to try to boost the properties of that food to help the kids. So that's why I said some institution may even do that without even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But if you think a little bit more, yeah, send a medium, one medium or two or three mm -hmm. to cook the soup. We do a prayer on the beginning. We do a prayer in the end. We do exactly the same as we do with the water. Because I think the soup has at least 50% of water in it as well, isn't it? And our physical body has more than that. So everything is energy. So if we do work with that mentality, 
that's why I said to you, this is a, one of the possibilities. No, no, you, you right after you described me, made me think. I, in the place I used to go, there was a specific um, work that was to prepare um, plates of food and put in specific com containers and then to distribute to people on the streets. And there were the regulars that we knew where they were and every week we would go to them and bring food to them and there were new people every every week that we would discover, find out and so on, or be in the same area. And the work around the cooking process, the making of the of the plates, the, the separation of the groups to cover different areas and the different moments where we would pray. We would pray in the beginning, we were um, starting to prepare the food. We would pray before we left um, to the streets and you would pray at the end. I think you're, I never really stopped to think about it, but um, for sure in that moment we are donating energy and we know that that food is not nurturing just the body, which is the immediate need, but it's also helping with any unbalance from a spiritual perspective as well. Mm -hmm. In some cases, that moment of the week was the only moment where those people would be interacting with anyone outside the group. So there, there is an element, as you said, everything is energy. There is an element of exchange of energy through that work as well. Right. What else? Before I go, before I go to the spiritual assistance. Any other one that comes to your mind? Let me go through the list you sent me. Let me take a look. I understand that every activity, the member of the institution, use his words and evangelization, a lecture. Even the person that stays on the gate saying good morning, good evening, be welcome. They can also be using mediumship without even noticing. Because a lot of the words that we say, if it's said in the right moment, in the right time, you may start to promote changes already. One of the key factors to have people really enjoying and deciding to stay in the institution is the way they are received. Sometimes it's not that the guy that's doing the lecture, it's not the person that's managing anything. It's the person that's over there on the gate. Good morning. You're welcome. What can I do for you? Sometimes it's a little detail that makes a difference. And sometimes we see that person that no one gives enough attention speaking for like half an hour with the person that we never saw. He's working. Perhaps better than we can do inside. Perhaps better than other people think they are doing. So it is part of every activity where you can use your words can be part of it. I would include, at least I would include as one possibility. Of course, if you say bad things, <laughs> we know it's not going to work, right? But uh, if we are prepared to help, yes. Because remember, if you are speaking to people, you are also magnetizing people through your lecture, through your conversation, sometimes it's better than a healing, depending on the people, depending on the intention. Sometimes people don't even know they can do that, and they do nevertheless. So yeah, there's a lot of few things you can see happening on the yeah. day to day that uh, I would include on, on that part. That's a very, very good point, and it's making me think about we always hit on the same key saying, look, mediumship is a natural occurrence that happens around us all the times. It always has. It always will. And we tend to hear that and associate to something like seeing ghosts or, or whatever. And But in reality, every single activity that we are 
involved with there is interchange in connection with spirits and especially now that we're talking about different medium mystic works within a, a spiritist group or a spiritist center as Guilherme said in every single activity there is exchange there is inspirations there is guidance there is opportunity to exchange energy to send energy to receive energy under the guidance of our benefactors so yeah everything is a minimistic work at some at some point it made me think about something else i remember th having these uh, discussions i think it was with uh, my mother maybe at some point um that we were talking about the people that would give lectures in in the center they would be invited to um, like every month they would have a day they would come and talk about a specific uh subject and i remember saying no but th this no i remember hearing well this is a, a type of mediumship it's you have to be inspired have to be connected with the benefactors and the mentors they will guide the study as well they will help you with your the reflections, examples, and so on, what needs to be said in that moment. And I remember saying, absolutely not. I don't accept that this is mediumship. Anybody can study something and go there and give a lecture. And it wasn't until I I, I got familiar with the subtleness, the subtlety of, uh, of being inspired and connected in terms of ideas that I realized what that meant. Really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Sometimes we study, we plan to do the best lecture ever. We prepare ourselves days in mm -hmm. advance. We bring the computer, we prepare everything. When you open your mouth, it goes at 108 degrees different. Nothing you plan works. Nothing you thought you would say, you will say. And you end up saying something totally different. Yeah. How can we explain that if it's not intuition, if it's not someone telling you, today you don't need to talk about that. Today, there's a, this particular person that needs to hear that. You see that person on the end, she's very quiet. So you need to talk about this little subject. And then your whole lecture starts to change. change. On the end, you see, hmm. OK. OK. Yeah. Yeah. But like most of the examples we are giving here, people are going to say, yeah, right, fine, I get it. But what I'm actually interested in is ostensive mediumship. What kind of ostensive mediumship works there are in the spiritual centers around there. And we did mention a bit about it from the cure perspective. And they mentioned a bit about receiving the messages in the, at the end of a study or of a lecture or receiving messages for specific assistance and questions that were sent for specific cases. Those are examples. But, yeah, you're going to say something then? The internet, if you know where to look, the internet can show us some proceedings that are made in some institutions that people may even say that's not possible. Some interventions made by the mediums and the spirits, materialized or not. So there are things that to understand we have to care about the study. Otherwise, we'll think that's nonsense. But it's there, recorded, registered by serious people that gain nothing with that. There is one institution in Rio de Janeiro called La de Frei Luis. It's massive, it's a city. They treat thousands of people every week. They have those particular type of reunions meetings to treat people that are in need and sometimes people that have been disregarded by the 
the normal science because they had nothing to do anymore. So when they realized there was nothing else that could be done by science, they tried to do something else. And some of the people, they were, they managed to be helped. Not everyone, some of them. And it's difficult to comprehend the, the amount of work that come together to a place like La de Frey Louise. But uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see the amount of people they are helped and they do not ask anything in return. They don't ask for money. They don't ask for anything. Right. So this is one of the things that's very important. If you want to go to a place where you may find something like that, key number, the key number one is pay attention if they will not ask anything in return. If they will ask for anything in return, it's a good start. But well, I wanted to finish, we again towards the end. I want to finish talking about another activity which is very common and is the spiritual assistance. That's, that's how I'm going to call it. Um, I don't know if there's any other names, but spiritual assistance, I think, is a, is a good way of calling it. And that one is a dedicated session to help our spiritual friends who are discarnate, who have already passed from this plane, and they might be suffering or going through specific troubles, and they need help. In those, again, a lot of uh, spiritist groups have that, those sessions, where we have mediums that Again, are, are able to either hear or see um, a spirit and then tell and translate what they are feeling, what they're going through, uh, what they're saying. Or in most, in most groups, we have mediums that are able to land their vocal cords and the spirits can communicate through, through them using their, their voice. Um, very common as well and you can have it can help like there's like a, a very wide um, possible very wide possibilities in terms of what kind of need what kind of help uh, those spirits need and you have from everything you have spirits that might not be aware of their situation and they are confused and they are stuck. They cannot move on um, in their journey because they're not quite sure of what's going on or it might have spirits that are stuck in things that they did or they're waiting for. And through that moment, by you being able to use a medium to express um, that, what they're feeling, what they are thinking, and talk to someone else there'll be other people in the group they'll be the ones um i guess guiding them through and talking through with them to help them uh, rationalize and think about um what's going on they are finally in contact with somebody they are finally feeling things closer to what it was when they had the body there's somebody giving attention to them and seeing them and talking to them so there's a lot of elements that help them um, I guess understand the situation and move on from wherever they were stuck. I have a different yeah. name for that. <laughs> I call that mediumship meeting. Mediumship <laughs> meeting. Yeah. And we have different degrees of mediumship meeting because every meeting has an objective and depending on the objective of the meeting, we have a different intensity of the participants of the meeting. So we have more than one. And very common people relate to a mediumship meeting as ob this obsession meeting. But this is a mistake in my opinion, because it's very difficult to see a true this obsession meeting everywhere. And, and when you said it's very common to see that those meetings, I wish I could say the same all over the world, but I know it's not. 
because a lot of people miss the opportunity to make it for many reasons, but they miss the opportunity to make it. And we know from fact that we need so much those interventions to help our friends that if we are truly spiritist, part of a spiritist center, we should not waste an opportunity to open, to start a mediumship meeting. Not only one, open mediumship meetings as they become required. Because quite often we are prepared to give lectures, prepared to give studies, and that's it. Now you figure out yourself what to do. If you are ostensive medium, uh, what I'm going to do now, so I really encourage every spiritist and spiritist center to evaluate the need and the possibility that we all have to have mediumship meetings. And if you already have one, that we cannot accommodate more mediums as they come, because when they come to a speech center, they are looking for help. Basically, is that if we are part of a speech center, we have everything we need to help. If we decide not to do, that comes on our tab. If I have means, if I have the knowledge, I have the possibility to do, and I decide not to do for any reason, that is on my tab, on your tab. Because that's what we're supposed to do. Because there's a lot of institutions that believe, no, I have already a, a meeting once a week, and that will suffice. That will suffice whom? That will suffice the person that comes to the institution asking for help? Or that will suffice you because you don't want to have an additional burden or additional work, or you don't want to have an additional work to plan to coordinate and to start a second meeting. We have to remember that every time a medium comes to a spirit center with his mediumship needing attention or not, what he's trying is to find a place to work, to practice, and then do what we always tell charity. If we don't create that opportunity for them, who is responsible for that? We need to think about it. Yeah. On those specific meetings, um, what I want to say is also that those are meetings that they are not open, right? It's not anyone can come and join and watch. Um, those are meetings that are kept um, usually in um, as closed meetings. There's, as, as they become established, right? I think there are different stages. But as they become established, they are closed because there, there's, a, there's an entire environment that's prepared for, for that meeting and it counts um, with the, what's the word? Um, the harmony, let's say, uh, within the group in terms of thoughts, in terms of intention, in terms of connection and so on. And depending on how many people you you have involved, they might not know what the meeting is about and how the meeting works and the, the role of the different people in the meeting. Um, you might end up, I guess, getting in the way or making it worse instead of making it better. And on top of everything, what's the point, right? The point of the meeting is to help these spirits not to... Um, fulfill anybody's curiosity or answer to anybody's curiosity in terms of, of how it works. So those won't be meetings that usually you'll be able to go into a center and sit down and watch. Guilherme? <laughs> what if the benefactor of your institution gave you an, instru an instruction to have an open meeting? What then, is, then is I think then it's different. It's a different game. <laughs> um, then it's a different game. Yeah. I think yeah. first of all, you need to be, you need to have the confidence on that message. You need to confirm that message. You need to understand the reasons why. Mm -hmm. well, of course, I would recommend people to study 
the Spiritist magazine from Kazakh to see how the meetings were, how they did, why they did. It's a good start. It's a good start. Yeah. Oh, it's all right. Time. We are at the end of it. I think we gave a lot of examples of things that you find in Spiritist groups. Hopefully it will shine some light if you had any questions or ideas or if you were concerned about anything, hopefully it made it a bit more easy and simple to understand. If you're in contact or if you get in contact with the Spiritist group, what you expect in terms of mediumistic works. And yeah, it was quite a nice, quite a nice chat. I'm gonna say thank you to everyone, Elsa, Nancy, and Norma for being with us. I don't know if there's anyone else there. They didn't drop their names. And before we go, let me go to the announcements. The usual. We have our Nosolar or Astro City Studies. The Tuesdays that we don't have time to talk, you have uh, Astro City Studies with Guilherme. So you can go with him. And we also have the Medium's Book Study every Saturday. You have the details there. You can also find the details on, on, on our Facebook page. And it's open to everyone. We are studying the Medium's Book step by step, every single uh, page that they have. And tomorrow we have our coffee break with Munir, where he talks a little bit about the book Genesis. Um, all for you to join online and to bring your questions to us. That is what I had for today. Guilherme, you have any final words? Thank you, everyone. That was a very pleasant time to be here. And looking forward to see you in two weeks' time. Hope so. Thank you, everyone. See you in two weeks. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.